Um, I say that because uh, he seems obvious. He was, uh, I'm fighting the, the number three contender. I'm number two, I'm the second, and uh, the first and the champ they are fighting. So it's obvious that uh, the winner gonna take the winner for the fight. What would happen from your perspective if Cormier wins that fight and decides he doesn't want to fight you? He wants to wait for John Jones or something. Would you? sit back and wait for it all to kind of sort itself out or would you take another fight in the meantime? Then I'll, I'll fight who? Then where will be the title? Hmm? The title yeah. has to be somewhere. So we will see at that time. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't just uh, assume things right now and say if, if we will see. Who do you think wins that fight, by the way? Do you have a preference who wins? I mean, would you prefer... No, I don't have a preference. Everyone who wins that fight uh, sh sh uh, should be a good f fight for me. Because uh, in other way, there, uh, I want the rematch with Stipe, and Cormier, since he's uh, almost about to retire, it would be good to have a fight against him, against him before he retired. So it's a, uh, it's good either way. I know you had mentioned to somebody in the very recent past that you'd be interested in fighting John Jones as well, if John ever moved up. I mean, I mean, if John if John moved moved up, it's uh, obvious that we're gonna fight. There are nothing uh, we're gonna happen. Uh, we're gonna uh, make that to not happen. You know, if he moves up to heavyweight, we're gonna fight. But there are something hundred percent sure. I'm not going to light heavyweight. And, uh, at least they cut me one leg or something. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned uh, yesterday how it had been a learning process for you that you'd have to learn everything really quickly, you know, especially getting to a high level in the sport so soon. And I'm curious, you know, how much of that was stuff, you know, that you, did you mean technically, or how much was stuff of learning, like how it is to be, you know, a pro fighter in the public eye, the stuff outside the cage. You know, you have to figure out uh, everything by yourself. Unfortunately, I didn't like uh, have um, someone to learn me how he works, how have someone to to teach me all all those things. I have to learn by myself. So you do your best, look around, and then try to understand the game. Every time you go there, you try to understand and pick up what you can pick up. That's the only way you can do. There are no a book that you're gonna take and uh, learn how to process. You know. And um, someone uh, know how to do because uh, of their past, because they grew uh, they grew up doing sport or competing. It wasn't my it wasn't my case, so I have to pick. So I have to do something. I know I always have to um, uh, f uh, fight against odds, but you know that's no the reason that I will um, I will not take the challenge. I not back down. Dana White had been critical, critical of you and saying that he thought that you had a big ego or he thought you made a mistake in, in moving your, your training camp before the fight. How seriously did you take that criticism? What's the, the relationship? Uh, how seriously did I take it? I didn't pay attention for it because um, unfortunately it's not the first critical that I have had I'd have in my life and you always be like that uh, since uh, people are expecting something and it didn't happen. And uh, once uh, there one thing, if that was my ego, maybe it was a good thing because without it, I would I wouldn't be here. So it's it's something that I'm proud of, and uh, I'm gonna keep it this way. Yesterday, yet or a few days ago, the French Ministry of Sports announced that uh, MMA would be recognized as a sport in France in January 2020. I'm just curious, what is your sort of initial reaction to that? I mean, uh, we were we were all happy because uh, we have been waiting for this for a very long time and uh, expecting because uh, expecting it to happen. Also, uh, I belong to the uh, French MMA com community, even though I'm not really a French. But that's where I started MMA. That's when I learned MMA. That's when uh, everyone that I know uh, before uh, on MMA. That where everything started so um, it will be that way most of my uh, my story uh, to different levels so it will be a good thing to maybe in the future have it to fight in France. I was going to ask you is it kind of a dream of yours to headline a UFC card in France perhaps sooner than later? Um, like a dream? I would not say a dream 
But uh, how I see things, I see things like, you know, uh, if MMA is going to happen in France, uh, anyway, it's gonna, it probably going to happen to the uh, Accor Arena, which is the park, which uh, the park is the park maybe like uh, half of miles from the parking lot that I uh, used to sleep when I went in Paris. I used to go there in the morning with my backpack and brush my teeth. And I was impressed, like, oh, this is the Arco Arena that uh, they are talking, they've been, I've been heard talking about. And uh, just imagine that you're going to be performing in that arena. Yeah, I mean, it's something big, something very huge. Francis, what's the challenge with a guy like Junior with a lot of his experience? What's the challenge with him? Yes, I mean, you answer your question. The challenge is a lot of experience. <laughs> Uh, he's a tough fighter. He's um, he has a lot of experience, as you say, and uh, right now he's very confident uh, regarding to his last past fight. Can you tell us about the outfit a little bit? Pretty cool. Thank you. Well, just proud Cameroonian outfit. <laughs> proud African. It's from my hometown. Since I can't fight in Cameroon. Since I can bring UFC in Cameroon now, I bring Cameroon here. <laughs>